okay in the second part of this lecture uh, we as we promised we start digging into the forms uh, and the real interaction with the user okay uh, it can be more also practical than the other part um, why would we need to uh, use forms or to discuss forms at the react level uh, then don't we already know forms from the html level yes of course and but the problem that is that the html forms are a bit of inconsistent so they are used properties in a different way the check boxes behave differently from selects uh, that behave different from inputs and so on this is for historical reasons they have a big le legacy to uh, to maintain uh, due to backward, compa com backward compatibility mm -hmm. uh, so uh, um, when we are we are dealing with forms in pure html and javascript we need to remember a lot of special cases um, react uh, tries to have a more uniform view of the forms uh, so that uh, every functionality is uh, say exported in the same way all the all the com input uh, components uh, have the same attributes the same properties and so on so it's a simplified and easier uh, to handle method and uh, but there are also some hidden traps uh, because uh, uh, in all of the react uh, application information flows from top to bottom but uh, at the bottom there are forms uh, and at the bottom there are, there are users that are changing the values in the forms so how can we accommodate for some some external entity like a user to change something that has been controlled by by the top and so we we see that this is where the discussion lies basically the um, uh, the handling of, of forms uh, it relies on two main properties uh, we'll, we'll see the many more details but the two, the two key ones that we want to mention at the beginning are the value and the change uh, value is an attribute that uh, is applied uh, is available on every um, form element so an input, a text area, a radio button, a checkbox, or whatever, a select, and so on. Uh, even if in HTML, these attributes are called in different ways, uh, in JSX, they are all uh, subsumed into one single value attribute. So when I'm setting the value attribute to a, a form element, uh, if it's an input, I'm storing the value which is inside the element. If it's a select uh, drop-down menu, I'm choosing which uh, um, which item we see, uh, will be shown. If it's a radio button, I'm selecting the, the button to be shown and so on. Mm -hmm. And so this, the, the, this value attribute is the current real-time value of a, of, a, um, of a form element. There's another attribute which uh, in, in, uh, in HTML doesn't exist. Uh, it's called the default value attribute, which is a valuable, uh, an attribute that is applied to the component uh, as soon as it's rendered for the first time hmm? but not later so it's a sort of default value when the component is created these two are a bit conflicting so usually you uh, in, an, in a given component you will not see both of them either the value is controlled by the react or i give you a default value and you you uh, will update it yourself hmm? but we'll see that in detail uh, for the moment uh, we just uh, appreciate the fact that even for text areas or for select that they use a, a very different convention for choosing the, the default value or the the, the current value also uh, while they are and they are now normalized into this single value attribute and the second key uh, attribute that is available in uh, in all the form uh, elements uh, is the on change event uh, it's an on change uh, attribute that will define the um, the event handler for changes in the value so whenever the value that we defined before changes this uh, uh, event handler is called and so we can um, manage every time something is changed into our form mm -hmm. and maybe update our state accordingly mm -hmm. so every time the value changes the on change event handler is called even if we type a single character, if we change a single number, then this will be called across all the element fields. Mm -hmm. And so a React can, is able then to manage every type of user interaction. It may become boring at times, but uh, you can control really everything. 
so uh, basically of course uh, when you want to uh, in some way interact with the user the user is able to use the different interactive elements on the page click on links uh, buttons uh, insert data and so on and every time the user does some action that you are interested in you would define an event handler so this is the same logic that we already had uh, in uh, in html um, the event handler is, is simply a function that is called back with one object as a parameter, it's the, the event object. And in particular, this object has one important property, which is the target, uh, that will point to the element that generated the, the object, the, the event itself. Mm -hmm. uh, every object has a set of properties, and some of them are more specific properties. For example, all the mouse events have all the information about the mouse coordinates and so on. Uh, this is, uh, is nothing new compared to what we already know at the DOM level, okay? Even at the DOM level, we had uh, event handlers, we register event handlers into DOM nodes and so on. Uh, one of the differences is that uh, um, the event handlers uh, here are registered simply by setting a property. Instead, at the HTML level, we, sh we, should, we would call the add event listener uh, uh, function to register a callback, but it's uh, just a, a syntactic difference. Um, React doesn't give you a real DOM event, it gives you a superset of, the, of, a, um, of a DOM event. They call them synthetic events, which are a bit more high level. Uh, every synthetic event has set this set of properties, and some of them, depending on the domain, have more specific properties. Uh, you see that these uh, are a, su a superset of the properties of a DOM event, so you can use them instead of the native uh, DOM uh, attributes. But if you really, really uh, need to see the native uh, event object, it's available here, native uh, event. Hmm. Uh, it's very rare, but in some cases maybe you, you want to see the browser event that was generated, it's here in native event. Otherwise, you can also use all this uh, uh, properties and you see that some of them are function properties like prevent default or stop propagation that we are uh, we are using we are accustomed to use uh, for example to to block propagation or the form submission and the uh, the event target here uh, which is the most important one uh, just remember that uh, in, well, the target normally points to the DOM element uh, in this case to the react element that generates the event in the case in which uh, this target is a form element, so it's an input, a select, a checkbox, uh, text area, radio button, and so on, then this node, the target node, will have at least these two attributes, name and value. The name is the name of the form element, the name of the, of the input box, and the value is the current value. So this will be key to manage our state evolution. Just remember that the event target will have name to identify which uh, um, form component generated the event and we'll have value that will reflect the current value of that event. Okay, uh, so these are the most important uh, methods and the other ones, if you are interested, you can see the documentation. And uh, we can register events on uh, many types of events uh, just by setting the specific event, event, event handle property. Uh, of course, uh, the on change is the most used in the in forms, uh, or also on submit is able for the forms, uh, for the for the for whole form element. Uh, we can have uh, on click for buttons or for any other elements where you can uh, uh, say handle a click on any part of the page, and so on. Mm. So this is uh, the full set of of uh, of uh, event handlers that you can define. The, uh, according to the different categories of events uh, that happens uh, and according of course to the different types uh, of, uh, of DOM objects that you can uh, um, register this on. Uh, of course some of them that they try to mark in bold face are more uh, more useful for us but uh, all of them they work exactly in the same way. You register an event handler and uh, um, this event handler will be called with an event object uh, when the event is fired. Uh, so just a couple of tips, uh, practical tips uh, about uh, defining the event handler. Uh, usually if you are defining an event handler inside a, uh, um, a class component, a React class component, this handler will be a property of the component itself. Uh, so it makes sense to, in, to define the handler 
uh, inside the function uh, you can define it as an arrow function it's fine if you define it uh, as a um, as a normal function so like a method using the method syntax so uh, just with using the name and the parentheses or if using a, a function expression the two are basically equivalent uh, just remember that this function is not bound to the class object but will follow the normal binding rules for this and so if you want to be sure that uh, inside the, the component uh, this dot handler refers to the handler of this function here uh, you must bind it hmm? so you must remember if you are using another function for defining your event handler you don't need to do anything more if you are using um, um, the method syntax or the functional expression syntax remember to bind them bind here or bind there your function uh, so if you are defining a function or defining a method without remember to binding it then the, you will get an error when you are trying to access this dot handler in your code second tip uh, um, remember to pass uh, the reference to the function hmm? the name of the function here so i'm passing the i defined this handler function and i need to pass this function as a prop to the element so for example i have a div where i want to pass a given handler property referring to this function and uh, this is the name of the function it's a copy of the reference to the function hmm? uh, remember not to call the function because otherwise you are calling the function now and the in the sending and the, as a prop the result of the function which is not what you want or nor to use a, a string hmm? that would uh, work in html where you s you send the a javascript fragment in, a, in as, a, as a text but not in JSX. In JSX, you need an object, and this object should be the name of the function, the reference to the function, and never call the function. Okay, never put the parentheses. Mm? Otherwise, it's not what you get. Um, and again, you are receiving your event handler down through the properties. So at some point, you must map the event handler onto a specific event. So imagine in your component, uh, uh, you receive the handler function in your props uh, and you want to associate this handler to the onClick event. So this is the right syntax. Uh, the name of the property, which is a reference to the function, um, is used, used uh, as an attribute, uh, the value, as an object value. You see the braces for an attribute uh, of type event. Again, don't uh, call the function even if you need to pass some parameters so in some cases you need to call this function with some value with some parameters okay i want to, it, it is a, has been clicked three times so i need to give you the, the value three because you need it to know about that but this is not the syntax for this because this syntax would call the handler when we are building the component no we want to call the handler when the component will be clicked so in the case when you, we want to delay or to pass some parameters in the delay called the, the normal way is uh, to create a new arrow function locally that will be called so in this case we are defining a new event handler anonymous that will call the props.handler function with the current value of the parameters when the function is called so we are delaying it so again even we, we just pass the function itself or we create a local function that can then compute any expression just avoid to call in the function at the compilation time at the component uh, rendering time okay so the, apart from the syntax which is a bit different from, from what we are doing in basic uh, html all the rest is quite uh, it's quite easy we are passing the function down and we are passing also event render that may modify the state but right now we have uh, Two competing uh, um, parts of, your, of our application that are trying to own the state mm -hmm. we have react where the big rule is that state belongs to a component the state can only modify by the component itself all the rules that we learned and then we have uh, form elements we have an input box uh, which 
at the html level at the dom level it does have a state you can write something into that and it will remember it so it has an internal state hmm? uh, so there's a sort of a conflict of where which well, what is the, the real state is the real state the one in react or is the real state the, uh, the one in the component and so we must find a way of, uh, of uh, reconciling this, this, this conflict in some way um, and uh, actually there are two ways of doing that one is the the react way and the other is the uh, the html way these are called the control components or uncontrolled components so, so this terminology is general but it, it makes more sense when, uh, when uh, speaking about forms a control component is a normal react, react component where the real own, real and only source of truth is the state of the component itself so any, every modification to everything that happens inside the form must be changed through the state so every time the user clicks on a letter or types a letter this letter will change the state and the, ch and the state change will update the uh, input element on the other hand we also have uncontrolled component uncontrolled component are those where we leave uh, the html behave normally uh maybe we have some legacy components uh, or some special type of component that don't behave correctly according to the functional react style um, and in this case we just leave the dom node to work uh, as they are supposed to and uh, but of course we will need some tricks uh, to be able to read the final value hmm? so let's see that in, in more practice first of all control components are the the normal part the normal pattern that the react suggests so we have a component that includes a form element so the component is here and the form element is being instantiated in the rendering part of the react components so in our render we are rendering this form element and we are passing at least a, a value and uh, a non-change method so these these two always go hand in hand they are required to always be together value will force the value of x to be displayed here so the user cannot change the value here if i'm typing something in this box it will not change really hmm? because what we are, what react is saying is that the value of this form element is fixed to this constant from the point of view the element is a prop and is a constant but when the user is clicking something uh, it's generating on change events and since these on change events are associated to a change x event handler this event handler is called so when i type a value here on change is called that will really change the change x variable uh, method that will receive the event and will get the event target value so the value from the form element that contains the modification that i just wrote and change update the state accordingly and so calling set state will sooner or later update the state variable x they will call a render function again that will send the new value to the form element so every time i click something here it will not change immediately but it will go all through this event under state change and re-rendering of the component all of this happens really very quickly you don't notice that but what you notice is that what you see here is only and always the value of the state hmm, that has been updated every time and here you can also do some even filtering if you don't like what the user types so you can prevent it and so on um, from the point of view of the code this uh, uh, just means that uh, we can instantiate a uh, an input a uh, form element for example an input by passing the value and the change value and on change all always these two are the key the value will be linked to the state of the element and the change handle change will update the state according to the target value to the even target value so it's a it's a two-way link from the component to the input goes through the state from the input to the component goes to the change event handler and in this case uh, we are the two are linked uh, but we are sure that the where uh, the real value of the component 
of the input box is here, is in the state. So React has the full control of the state of the component. This may become a bit boring if you have many components in your page, because for each of them, you have, of course, to define a different change handler, because the set state will change the name property of the state. But if you have 27 different fields, uh, you may have a handle change name, a handle change date, handle change uh, age, or whatever. Um, you can uh, use some tricks uh, to make it uh, easier to do. No? So imagine you have uh, uh, many fields, uh, and uh, the trick is uh, basically using the set state syntax, uh, the set state is called uh, with the uh, with dynamic property syntax. So this string syntax uh, is able to define an object uh, with a key, which is a string. It's not a constant, it's not a literal, it's the value of the string name. So in this case, what we are doing is that uh, an input, uh, in a generic input uh, with name x uh, is linked uh, to a property x. Of course, this property x, uh, x here, is assigned uh, link to the state x so the state is called x it passes a property called x and this property is assigned as a value to an input element which a form element called x so you see x x x is always the same whenever there's a change in this element we can call an update field a generic function with the update field with the name of the element which is x and the target value which is what whatever the user has provided and this update field doesn't know about the input called x or where y or z or whatever it knows that uh, there's an update to do on some name of the state variable so in, the, in this case the name will be the string x and with square brackets will uh, use the property called x to create an object with a given value so in this case the, the same the identical function update field may be used for all the form or for many form elements all the all the, the elements that uh, should just be updated hmm? uh, this requires basically that the name of the state variables state.x must be the same as the name of the html element so should be uh, we should be very consistent with naming of the properties and so in this case we can only create one event tender for just closing this loop uh, of control components here so uh, it's not a change x uh, but we change uh, any and x is passed uh, as, a, as a as a name property to the, to the caller hmm? and so we don't have to create uh, a lot of methods and and this this management of, of the or the of control of form elements as controlled elements is easier than it looks hmm? on the other hand we may have uncontrolled components so we should really be scary or not try to abuse about them but they are possible we need them uh, the the main difference is that uh, we don't we are not passing a value because we are not controlling at every time the value of the component we are just passing a default value the initial value of the property so this is probably most likely taken from a property not from a state because uh, it will not change dynamically in any any way and so this value is displayed as an initial value and the change event is processed locally so when the user clicks or writes something this new value is just updated here in the in the form element uh, and we are interested we are not interested in, in all the events we are just interested on when the final value is available so we leave, we let the form element do its work and when it's finished we are interested in the result and in this case for example on the submission of the of the whole form and at this point we can get and collect all the data and uh, um, and save them or send them uh, somewhere else so we, the, while the form is, is displayed, React will not work in any way. It's just the browser. We will just interact with the form elements in the browser. 
so in this case the react component doesn't have any state that can represent the value of the form element and you must you may ask yourself but if the react component doesn't know the state how can this method read this value because the submit event doesn't carry the value of the element the submit is usually generated by the form element not, not by the input elements and form doesn't have a value so we need some way to access the individual form elements in order to be able to read the data the values provided by the user because the react component doesn't know them it's only the dom that knows them this is the, with, this is the difficulty with uncontrolled components react loses the control doesn't know what happens inside these elements we'll see this in a second um, so basically what we are doing here is creating um, an input an uncontrolled input of type uh, text in this case we are not even passing a default uh, value we are not forced that so we'll start uh, uh, empty and uh, we are handling the submission of the event handle submit here so that when the form that contains the input we submitted i can call this uh, handle submit event uh, um, and at this point uh, only during submission i will collect uh, all the real data the data that the user has been writing hmm? um, this data uh, can be collected by a mechanism called reference hmm? a reference we'll see that in, uh, in two slides uh, we are marking uh, the input element with a reference that will inject into the object uh, a, a property that uh, is able to uh, remember this object so we'll see the detail in a moment but for a moment we can un just understand that at this point uh, we are querying the value of the real DOM node that has been mounted in these input elements and this property this input remembers the DOM node corresponding to this one hmm? um, we we'll see that uh, as I said in, in a moment uh, but uh, there is no on change mm? the change event is not defined so uh, you either uh, define a, a value and on change together or you define the submit event and you leave the the form to its own its own life mm? as much as possible uh, try to use control components to implement the forms uh because you are you are you, you have a very special place which is the state uh, where the state is where the uh, value of the component is defined by the way if you are also trying to do something in parallel for example checking the minimum or maximum length of a given field uh, or giving you know a password strength indicator or replicating some data so while the user is writing here the same information will appear immediately in another part of the page uh, then you really want to have a control component because you want your react replication to know at every time what is happening in the forms not just a submission time at any time if you don't care about what happens in the mid in the meantime well you can also go with an uncontrolled component uh, you just remember that you, you will do everything at submission time um, in some cases you have no alternative because there are some components that cannot be turned uh, into control component uh, uh, in some cases you can let go uh, let them go with uncontrolled components in other cases you can maybe use some other libraries that will rob them for example uh, we have um, a bootstrap react uh, library which is able to wrap uh, some of the bootstrap components that are not functional into these functional methods so somebody else uh, did the work uh, of making a controlled component uh, that will include uh, some other component that by default is, is not controllable but let's get into the detail that i mentioned before about uh, uh, how to access component references so if i have an uncontrolled component uh, the current state is in the dom and not in react state so how can react know information read that uh, the rendering method the rendering cycle is always unidirectional okay so we remember that we uh, render an element the element is translated into the virtual dom the dom is diffed and then is mapped to the real dom 
there is no way back so the react elements that we are creating are not the real dom nodes and they're not linked in any way to the real dom node this will come after so when we write our code we, we don't have yet the reference to the dom nodes how can we query a value from one of these nodes that we don't know yet hmm? and uh, this is uh, and this for the case of format this uh, question is more general maybe you are inserting into your page a media player so the media player is a javascript object that will come some methods how can you call some methods onto a javascript object a, a node object a, a script element for example in your page or you have a um, you know a map no? a map widget so you also want to read some properties or call some methods on that so in there are some cases some legitimate cases in which you want uh, to really um, access the real dom node there is a possibility uh, to get a reference to the node it's a, it's a it's a long topic but we will make it short here um, for getting a reference to for embedding into a react element the reference to a dom node hmm, a real dom node uh, you you work in two steps in the first step you create a reference by uh, mapping to any uh, by creating a local property of the object this dot my reference equal to react dot create, create a reference so we are creating a ref object and uh, later on in the render method in the render method in the render part when we are creating an element that we want to know that we want to remember the reference to we add the ref attribute so in this case we what we are saying what we are telling to react with the ref attribute is just is remember this div and store the reference to this div into this dot my ref so in this case when the component is mounted so right now when we are rendering the component the div doesn't exist yet but sooner or later the div will uh, be mounted and at that point we have the node and that node will be stored into my ref so at this point uh, we can use my ref and in particular my ref is not really the reference to the component but it is a current pro because my ref is a reference object it's not the, a node uh, in terms of a JavaScript object, it's a, it's a reference, it's not a node. Uh, current is the node. So this dot my ref is the reference. This dot my ref dot current is the node corresponding to this div that we create. So at component definition time, we must create a reference, link the reference to an object, and then we can inside our other methods use current the current attribute uh, to get to the actual dom node and in particular in our case in our form you can get the value of the node hmm? so that was in this in this example here we have this dot input input is here was a reference that was mapped uh, to this input element here dot current current just extracts the node corresponding to the reference dot value value is the property of this input text so this is a four step uh, uh, journey to get to the real value uh, this is more useful for dom nodes uh, it may also work with class components but um, usually when we when we go all this way all, all this trouble not to get the reference uh, is because we really want to uh, have access to a dom node uh, there's a, also another uh, different uh, syntax for getting more or less the same result, which is the callbacks uh, uh, references. Uh, this is an older method which also works with the uh, older versions of, uh, of React, uh, while the first one uh, is just from the 16.3 probably onwards or something like that. Um, the difference is that uh, we are uh, defining, a f so the ref attributes uh, is not uh, an object but it's a function. So here, the ref attribute contains an object, and this object has been created by create ref. An alternative is defining the reference uh, as a function. So in this case, it's an arrow function here, and the body of the arrow function will uh, 
may store the reference itself so the parameter of the general function is the reference to the object so what you are do what we are doing here is that when the component is mounted this reference function is called with the parameter corresponding to the node itself and then we can do whatever we want but basically we will store this reference to the node into some property of the object at, that, at this point this dot my reference will be the object so we don't need to put current uh, to extract the knowledge because this is, is already the parameter of this callback uh, is already the object so it's a it's an older method but it still works uh, it depends on what you want to do here it's just it's a bit more convoluted because you need to remember to, uh, to define a function that will later on store the property and in the other case the property is already visible and declared in the constructor hmm? but they both work actually um, this uh, by the way will also work on functional components uh, because it's done entirely inside uh, the, the the render method hmm? it doesn't it doesn't need to have a constructor um, so uh, if for uncontrolled uh, components uh, we we are we are doing all the work into form submission uh, we may also have a, a, a sort of a mixed form so maybe we can have uh, uh, form elements the input elements that are controlled when we want to check the state and uh, we want we want to uh, maybe the form element itself uh, should be uncontrolled um for example for validation so first of all uh, just remember that we are when we are submitting an event so if we are inside the submit uh, event uh, always remember to call prevent default okay. otherwise uh, remember that the, the default action for a form is to reload the page uh, you don't want to reload the page because this will kill your application your react application will load it from scratch okay so always prevent default and uh, um, usually in the submit uh, event uh, you was you want to do some validation so uh, doing the validation may uh, be done directly in react so since everything if if the components are controlled everything is in the state and so you can do all your checks substrings minimum length maximum length or whatever um, you can also help yourself with the validator uh, function that you just need to install uh, which is uh, exactly the same validator library that we used uh, in Express uh, uh, on the server side. <coughs> so the two validation rules may also match uh, easily because they are computed by the same library, the server side version and the client side version. Or maybe you could ask yourself, but we, we learned that HTML5 is already able to do a lot of validation by itself. We learned how to create HTML forms that are that already apply some some uh, some some constraints to to the value that they accept the problem is that with control components we are overriding the the normal behavior of the browser and so but we what we could do is to use a reference to uh, to ask to the browser to do the validation itself so for example in the submission uh, form uh, we could uh, call the check validity and report validity methods that are DOM methods for the form element check validity will just tell you true or false whether the elements are valid and report validity will print all the error messages um, besides the, the elements okay uh, these are methods that are not available in react they are just available only on the DOM nodes well it's not a problem because we can have a reference to the form element and uh, we, we may call this uh, item so in some way we are not totally replacing what the browser is doing we are collaborating or we are asking for the browser to help us in, in some aspects mm -hmm. so uh, uncontrolled components are bit, you should be careful by, by using them but in some cases they may, turn, may, they might turn out to be really useful um, there are other other ways uh, of uh, of managing this uh, this problem and for example uh, we might suggest if you if you really need to manage a lot of uh, forms uh, there are other libraries that are easier to manage the states uh, of a form so they you give you all the instruction and they will <coughs> handle the form state update uh, for you for example formic is one of such libraries which is one uh, 
uh, frequently used uh, uh, with React. So if you are if you are interested, uh, instead of writing your own event handlers, you could use a library that will do that for you. Mm -hmm. It's not much complex as you, as you saw because of just remembering to to set the right names and the right properties. But uh, there are mm, if your application is highly form driven, maybe some library may help you like form it. And finally, uh, there's one topic that uh, is also related with forms, even if not about forms, uh, is that many cases forms are using to, to, to manage data, to enter data, to store data into your system. And, uh, and this data is usually a composed of a list of elements. Mm -hmm. So one very important question is, uh, how can I update uh, the state uh, variable that is represented as a list or as an array? Uh, we, in all the examples that we saw up to now, because they w it was easier, the state was just single variables, single objects, sing single strings, single numbers. So it's easy because you just have to replace this number or this string with a new one. But if your state is an array, uh, the list of uh, to-do tasks, uh, the list of uh, scores, the list of exams, uh, most of our data structures are lists uh, or arrays. Um, how and this array is a property of the state of the object. So we should be careful when we are changing this array because there are rules uh, about how we may change the state. You just should remember that you never mutate the state itself. You should always provide a new copy. Hmm? So I'm, um, I'm adding three slides that will cover uh, the most frequent cases. When you have a state that contains an array how can you add, update, or remove the items? Hmm? Uh, the basic rule is uh, always set the state by using a copy, a new array, and not modifying the original array. And uh, in most of the cases, you should call the set state with a callback function because we are you are setting the new state based on the old state hmm? because you are still retaining uh, the old elements. So part of the old state is still retained. And so you must use the, the, the callback version of the set state function that uh, is not prone to losing some updates uh, as, we, as we mentioned in the last lecture. Okay, so let's see these three examples. Uh, one is uh, adding items uh, with set state. So you have an array in a state. So a state contains uh, many elements. One of them is a list of elements. And you have uh, uh, an event handler that wants uh, to add an element uh, to this array. So the easy part is appending at the end. So you want to, to add a, a D to this uh, initial array. So how, how, can, how can we do that? We can use the concat... You see that the set state is using the functional version. So it's I'm defining a callback with the arrow function to update the state. State is the old value of the state. State.list is the old value of the list. And what we are returning is the new update to the state itself. So it's the new version of the list. We are returning a complete list, a full list, which we computed by the old list and we concatenate a new, the single value. In this case, we call it state value, assuming it is in the state, but it may also be in a property or as a parameter in some way. Uh, we are using concat and not push uh, because for two reasons. First, push modifies the original array and we are not allowed to do that. And second, push does not return the array, but it returns the number of elements, which is totally not what we want here because we need a reference to the new array. Uh, on the other hand, if we are we want to insert a new value at the beginning, well, we could, for example, use the spread operator, saying, okay, we create a new list from scratch, and this list uh, will have a new item, and then all the other old items from the state. And you see here, we are still using a narrow function so that uh, uh, this list of state elements will be taken at the moment uh, where the state, state function is actually called and not when it's uh, being scheduled and then we return the full list 
uh, you may remember in the main text you find them uh, in this way in the examples just returning an object with a shortcut uh, shorthand property names so in the case uh, you find yourself having the key equal to the name of the variable you can drop the key basically so if you drop the key when defining an object uh, the name of the variable will be used also as the key since it's very frequent to do this because we are consistent in using the variable names uh, uh, then if you see the syntax uh, uh, is not is not anything new is just a shorthand for uh, having a key equal to the name of the uh, of the property of the, pro of the property value mm. um, adding is easy modifying an item in an array it's a bit more complex uh, but basically it relies on a map mm. you should rely on a map again you should set state with a function uh, callback and uh, you must create a new array by copying all the old arrays when uh, uh, in, in all the elements that you don't need to, to, to update so maybe you, you have an item uh, the item is the value j is the index of the of the element that we are mapping and let's assume that i is the index of the element that we want to modify so if j is, is equal to i so if the element that we are mapping is the one i that we want to modify then we can return a modified example a modified item in all the other cases we are returning item so having a map we are return where you return the item will just reconstruct rebuild the same array but we are rebuilding the same array except in position i in the in position i we are doing something different for example we are increasing the value so here in this uh, item plus one we are uh, embedding the logic on how we can why we should modify the item i in position i that uh, needs to be modified so the idea is again use a functional version of the set state and use a map the map will create a new array will not modify the old one and if we want to delete or remove some elements, uh, well, it's the same. We can uh, use the, sec the, the same uh, uh, method uh, by, uh, by using filter, for example. So we are, by using filter, we are creating a copy of all the elements that match uh, the given uh, condition. And in this case, the condition could be that uh, uh, the index of the element J is not I, and I is the index of the element that we want to delete or some other condition based on, on a property of the elements not just uh, on the index maybe mm. and again filter will create a new array so we are always safe we should remember to use methods in any case they will create new arrays so the the, the structuring rest uh, operator the three dots uh, we are creating a new array uh, we are creating a new array with filter we are creating a new array with map uh, we are creating a new array with concatenate, uh, we are creating a new array with the array syntax and so on. Mm. Always use these methods. Uh, I, the last options here, if we not want to remove the first item or the first few items, we, we should use a uh, destructuring statement where we assign the old state to an array where the first or second element are named and the other are just stored into the rest uh, and the rest uh, is what we return uh, uh, for the state value hmm. so these are the tricks uh, uh, just keep these references handy because they will be useful when you want to manage uh, your your state elements hmm? if the state contains a list okay so this uh, is the the conclusion of also of, of the second part uh, uh we learned a lot of rules a lot of details how to manage forms how to manage uh, the state and so on and we still have our general react principles that are guiding us and they are telling us uh, uh, that the key difficulty is finding the right place for everything uh, where do we put the state basically where do we put the props how we, how do we pass the props uh, what kind of objects should we pass and so on this is the, the main difficulty in designing the application. Then all the rest is quite easier because we are just to manage some data structures or uh, 
or create some element trees but the real challenge is having uh, it's learning to think about a, a, a good architecture for our application and it is not easy and uh, you will modify then the lift the state up and down many times uh, while you are designing this is normal because uh, you, you we need to strike a balance uh, between passing too many information down or having too many callbacks up uh, and so on and there's no strict rule um, one rule that may help us in uh, in thinking about uh, where the state of application should live uh, is to think uh, about our components and uh, ask ourselves if the components are presentational or container components uh, a presentational component uh, uh, we, we mentioned the difference uh, in, the, in the very first class about uh, <clears throat> about react but now we are able really to, to understand what we mean a presentational component is usually something just to to show information to the user and uh, maybe it's a form it's a table a form is not just for showing it's also for interacting but it's something that is very focused on a specific uh, part of data uh, many of these presentational components don't need to have any state okay if you have a table probably this table doesn't need to be to be managed by it's in any state it just has some properties that will pass it the the data that they need but also a table may have some states maybe the sorting elements or we can hide some columns or hide some rows changing the sort order filtering the table in some way these are all operations that are local to the table so uh, the table component may have may have normally legitimately a state which is local to the component itself and maybe to its children it's not uh, something that will change the state of the application it's just something that the component needs uh, to remember which is the short order to remember which which lines or columns are hidden or shown and so on this is information which is properly stored inside the component so these presentational components may have state and in this case it's a local state a state which is only interesting to the component itself to render itself better it doesn't affect in any way the application logic the business logic of your application on the other hand the application components the application components uh, they're called also container components uh, in some cases uh, there are other type of components that normally don't show anything they're just there to put together other components uh, or in some cases they are just there for managing the context or for managing the state they are in a position that where they have the visibility over the lower tree of, of components and they make take decision for them they make validate the choices they make decide how to structure the page what components should be rendered and what should, should not be rendered and so on and should, usually these components are the ones where the state is normally going and this will be the application state uh, we don't we don't care about the details about whether a form is visible or not or whether a table is sorted by date or by alphabetical order we know which which are our data we know our user we know the per user permission and so on uh, we know the latest version of the data we speak to the server for sending data and uh, and reading data so we are the source of truth the components where the the real state of the application is stored it may be all in one component it may be in a group of components some will be maybe in a component state and some part of it could be in a context but we already know that the context is not is nothing more than a copy of some state variable so these state variables are actually the, the the places where the application logic happens in more complex applications uh, we'll see next week uh, uh, there are specific components that have the role of state managers probably for the type of application that we are developing we don't need to go to such complexity but we need to identify the component that will manage the our our data model and this component maybe they, they they don't render anything or they render something just very stupid they just render the, the whole application they are just container components that contain the state and all the methods for handling the state 
they don't have any display logic they don't have any presentation logic they don't generate directly the markup but they compute the value of the props or the context that will be used by other components to display themselves so you know in some way the presentational state tends to travel down to the visual components that need to be dynamic to to have a, a better interaction with the user the application state tends to lift up towards one or few or a small number of components that are close to the top level and this, that will manage the, the the state of most of the application and so they, they, f they concentrate the focus all the state change into one single component or a handful two or three components for different parts uh, uh, of, of the web page itself usually uh, we don't have we don't want to have too many components uh, that are that they're working together to manage the application state every component uh, should just manage their own local state uh, for their own visualization purposes that's it plus one two big components that manage the state for everything else this is more or less the, the the react philosophy where, where it leads where it leads you okay uh, there may be one state manager for everything or or different state managers for different parts of the application if they are in some way separated so maybe you may have uh, all the you know the stream of the posts uh, and just imagine facebook's uh, and then you have the list of, of friends they are they are different in nature they are not sharing the same information so they may have different components that will manage the information concerning to them but you know that the, for the list of posts that is the component that will have all the information and all the other components will just receive information from there so there's a lot of state lifting up in these declarative methods and it's not easy to see immediately uh, where the state is going and also when we did the work we did last time of uh, decomposing the application in a top-down manner uh, maybe in some cases not right so that the, the good decomposition should look at the page structure like we did but the good com decomposition should also look uh, at the state sharing so there's a, a second tree which is an invisible tree which is not the tree of components but this tree of uh, information propagation where we are adding the state and not just the props like we did in the, in the last week the information propagation will change so probably we will need to move some components or to move some state uh, containers up or down or to merge some trees or to create some wrapper components in order to be able to manage all of that there is no uh, golden rule for doing all of this it's just of uh, design trial and error and, and refactoring and correction what we saw in the next uh, video we'll try to do that uh, in our example with the course co uh, course uh, scores uh, and in the next lab uh, of course uh, we'll try to do that uh, with the running example of the of the to-do list but for the theo for the theory part of this uh, of this week uh, we are over and then we go to the practical part thank you and see you next week